Hello everyone, my name is Nigel Mungeri and welcome to Brand Awareness, the show where we talk to businessy type people about how they got started and so they can give you guys advice on how you can get started as well. I'm sitting here with Emily. Hi. She's a long, -term, long time friend of mine mm -hmm. and uh, she's actually helped me get things on the road for myself and so I'm pretty sure she has a lot of good things to say. So tell the people a little bit about yourself before we get started. Well, um, I am the director of Colab Opelika, um, formerly known as Collaboration Station. Um, we are a co-working facility located in the heart of downtown Opelika. Um, we help people find space and resources so that they can launch their business, um, but if they're an established company, also have a place where they can have really low overhead and operate with a very low burn rate um, due to the fact that we are a shared space and we share resources um, and because of that we foster a lot of entrepreneurship and um, new business development so oh yeah that's really cool actually I got started here yeah. in the collaboration station uh, well at first I was in my house <laughs> so then I kind of expanded out and I found you guys and it's, it's been really cool ever since yeah so what type of people would you say have, have gotten their start here as well Wow, we've, I mean, that's a lot of question because there is probably every industry we check the box for <laughs> every type of company that could be in here. So whether it's an accountant or a lawyer, uh, a graphic designer, a social media director, um, industrial cleaning company, um, startups, um, the local newspaper, of like Observer, is in here. Um, basically, every type of business can operate out of here, and it creates a really amazing ecosystem of different companies all under one roof. So it's it's pretty neat how. Oh, you got a lot going on here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How many uh, people? How many different businesses would you say you have in the in the building right now? We have about seventy companies that operate in some capacity, whether it's co-working, a dedicated desk, or a private office suite. Um, mm -hmm. We also have some people that use our mailing or post office, and so we have a couple companies um, that just have a mailing address here as well. Oh, yeah, that's pretty awesome. Um, how did you? I guess. Um, we, I guess before the collaboration station happened, before it became a thing, um, what, what were you doing before here? Um, yeah, so I, I actually moved here from Indiana and I used to own an embroidery company and I ran okay. that out of my house as yeah. well. Um, and so I knew a thing or two about needing space and needing a place. Um, and you know, working out of your home has its limitations. Um, yes, it does. <laughs> you kind of are, um, you know, we were kind of at the seams of, of our space. I mean, it was, you know, uh, and, and embroidery, you think of monogramming. Um, I actually did more of like contract work for um, race teams, um, doing custom race suits. That's cool. Um, and using fireproof thread to create logos on face uh, on racing suits. Um, and I also did a lot of breweries, a lot of businesses that needed their logo on things. Um, so I did a lot of business to business um, with my embroidery shop. But again, I was working out of my home and I needed space. And yeah. um, I think once I moved here to Alabama, I saw that need. And I also saw that I could be a mentor to other businesses. Um, I think that's kind of how our relationship got formed. Is yeah. <laughs> you came looking for space, um, but more importantly, you looked for a community that you wanted to build. Um, and you do that by building relationships with people. And this place fosters that. So, you know, as soon as you walked through the doors, you know, we became friends, we became colleagues in a way. Um, and it was um, through conversations and discussions that really lifted you up in your idea and helped you foster your community that you built. Exactly. So uh, it has like a chain reaction of that. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Um, okay, so. Uh, we're here in a very unique situation for this interview because you'll be also talking about, um, I guess, property management as well. Because that's, I know that's something else that you're also involved in. So, yeah. uh, what's the capacity you operate in that as well? So it's funny. I never thought 
ever that I was going to be in property management. <laughs> it's not something that really excited me, but it really lent itself into this realm of co-working um, because this space in here, you know, mirrors the outside. There are small little individual offices that look very similar to the downtown of Opelika, these right. little shops. Um, and this is just a stepping stone to your next and bigger space. You know, people build what they say is a forever home. Mm -hmm. That's never the case. Like we are always constantly growing our business, our family, our community. And when you're building things, your space and your needs become bigger and bigger. And so this is really just a starting point here at CoLab where you can get that collaboration. You can get your feet, you know, wet in your business and you can really um, not burn through all your startup cash, right? right, right. <laughs> you know, run it really affordably. Um, and then when you're ready to make the next step, we're here to grow with you. So we have probably 12 different properties in downtown Opelika. Um, so you have the ability to kind of grow from here to the next space. Um, we have a sister property called The Stone that is opening, um, which okay. is a little more upscale. It's just a block and a half down the street. Um, so you can step step stone yeah. to the next level <laughs> down there um, and then eventually get a brick and mortar so this concept of um, creating space for people you know starts at a really basic level here at collaboration station or collab um, and grows to the streets of Obelika to these beautiful old historic buildings that are you know beautiful yeah. brick and and I feel so blessed to be in the position where I'm helping develop those spaces and helping make them useful spaces to business owners because without the attention of developers um, that are uh, intentionally developing them in a way that keeps the charming downtown vibe but also makes them useful spaces there's a lot that goes into that you know yeah exactly that's so, ooh, you got like one. <laughs> yeah it's amazing I love being a part of it too I mean there are very few people in Opelika that are making these moves but we're all doing it collectively exactly um, and I think it's it's kind of gone through a renaissance of a sort you know oh, yeah. um, you're starting to see more people and uh, people are riding skateboards and longboards down uh, Main Street yeah. you know you, you're getting like I'm one of them. <laughs> yeah and it's awesome to see that life come together here in Opelika you know the people are moving and they're doing things and it's, yeah. it's pretty awesome so another thing I, we, I want to ask you since you started you, you say you started your embroidery company at your house mm -hmm. and then um, what was that process like I guess getting that started um, what did you need to get set up and like how did yeah. you go about talking to people about it yeah so I, I bought my first machine right as I got out of college mm -hmm. um, and then um, just kept buying more and more machines that would fit <laughs> and I just had to keep making room for them um, and I started really just with the the concept that um, you know how you get printed t-shirts and they're, mm -hmm. they just end up at like Goodwill, you know, yeah. because they're made on a crappy t-shirt. Right, the right. design was cool, but they didn't, they didn't put enough effort into picking, you know, the blank shirt right. to be nice so it ends up at Goodwill or it ends up as a paint shirt, you know? Okay. My concept with that was I'm going to dress you really well and then I'm going to put your logo on it. I'm going to search okay. out the best, nicest brands that I can find, the softest t-shirt that ever was, yeah. and then I'm going to put your logo on it. So um, I went with that intention um, and then I worked really hard on building relationships with business owners. Um, again, I think that's where the majority of how I developed mentoring mm -hmm. was just my love of working with startups and, and people who had a brand and wanted to promote it on right. clothing. So um, what was that process like, I guess, approaching approaching these companies or these people? Um, you know, I, people say you got a cold call, and, <laughs> you know, but um, I think that the really true business relationships are made through conversation, mm -hmm. saying hello, introducing yourself, learning about someone's company before you start to sell them. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I, I believe in um, pitching the problem that you solve, not the product. 
Okay. So, you know, if, if the problem is, hey, I've got this great logo and nobody, you know, sees it, or I've, I've printed shirts before and they've mm -hmm. ended up at, as a paint shirt, yeah. let's solve that problem. And as opposed to the service of embroidery or, right, right. you know, or screen printing, you know, so um, anytime someone pitches me their idea, I want them to tell me the problem that they're solving first right. um, and instead of selling me on the product. And I right. think that's a, a great conversation starter and that's how you build relationships and that's how you sell more and how you grow your business. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. So I guess if, uh, if you were to... What I guess what problems have you solved through your embroidery business in the past? What problems have I solved? Ooh. Um, well, it's been years now since I sold the company, <laughs> so it's been a while. Um, oh, you even sold your company too? I did uh, okay. to move here, actually. Um, problems that I've solved, I think it was more about how, I, I would say mostly with the race suits, mm -hmm. the custom race suits, um, we were trying to figure out how to use this uh, fireproof thread. Mm -hmm. um, God forbid someone gets in an accident and goes right. up in flames, I mean that thread can burn, if it's not used, the proper thread can burn through someone's suit. Mm. Um, and so. Um, we had a lot of problems just trying to figure out how to do that. Also, how to, <laughs> if a, a drivers are typically really small guys, and right. if the suit is already constructed, meaning it's already, the seams are already put together, you know, how do we get that into a frame and um, get it into the machine if, oh, yeah, if right. it's got all of those. So we actually started working with how to, how to, get the suits prior to their construction okay. and print and stitch on that fabric That's prior cool. to it being um, sewn up. Um, in regards to, to collab, um, problems that we're solving is, you know, I think for the client, um, you know, in order to launch a business, you have to have a space where you can operate. Um, and that space has a lot of expenses to it. Right. Um, as you know, um, you've got to pay <laughs> your power bill, you've got to pay your water bill, you've got to pay your internet, you've got to have a printer, you right. know. Um, you have to pay your lease every month. Mm -hmm. um, and there's deposits that go into that. And so for Colab, the problem we solve to our clients is that they don't have to deal with all of that. They can come in and lease a space um, short term because um, all of our memberships are month to month. And they can actually uh, use the space. Like our co-working is, you know, a hundred bucks a month. Right. Um, and to operate your business for a hundred bucks a month, I mean, if you're launching a company, that's something very needed. Yeah. It's very needed, and I think it's going to spawn more people to take the risk to open a business here in yeah. Opelika. It'll give them the opportunity where they once thought, "Wow, I don't have the capital, the startup capital, to, to maintain." The, you know, because it takes a mm -hmm. while to get revenue. You know, from the opening of your doors to maybe three years down the road, your revenue stream is just not. You know, in the beginning, is yeah. not what it's going to be. You know, as exactly. you know. Um, you know, the day you first opened, I'm sure your revenue wasn't what it is today. Um, it, it definitely was not close. Time. It takes time to develop that, but if your overhead is so heavy in those first couple months, how are you supposed to make it? You know? exactly. This episode of Brand Awareness is brought to you by the Collaboration Station. It's a great place for business people to meet, have great networking opportunities, as well as acquire affordable space. If you need any entrepreneurial help, they'll be more than happy to help you out. At 216 South 8th Street, Opelika, Alabama, 36801. Now, without further ado, let's hop back into the show. So you're just helping people get their dreams get, started. Get huh? the dream started. Okay, so now you solve a problem with the space. What are the kind of starting phases for someone who kind of want to just get just a, a general understanding of what businesses they can start? Like what should they, how should they start? I think a business plan is crucial. <clears throat> you should always write a business plan. The more research that you do leads to, again, I think the way that we do research is not just in a book or online and Googling things, but it's meeting with people. And those are the foundations of the network that you're creating. So whether it's getting a quote on, um, on a building or getting a quote on a space, you're meeting with somebody, you're, you're pitching your idea, you're getting yourself out there. Mm -hmm. And so 
I think the basics of, of writing a business plan is meeting with people. Oh, yeah, talking about the idea, yeah. you know, getting feedback, getting um, some information from people who might be your client or maybe people mm. that you would work with in the future, that's the start. Exactly. Yeah. I always tell people that you got to get out there and talk to people. Oh, all and, the time. And I think, I, I, don't, I don't know what it is, but maybe it's always been a thing, maybe I've just been unaware. But I feel like people are a bit more shy now than they've ever been in the past. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what may contribute to that, but... I, I think it's a generational thing, too. <clears throat> if you talk to, like, the great business people of the past, you know, they, they would always say that the ticket to success was picking up the phone. You know, mm -hmm. their little corded phone, you know, and <laughs> all day they would pick up the phone, pick up the phone and make that contact, you know, meet exactly. for lunch, talk about things. And then, and I think in this generation, it's so much easier to hide behind a keyboard and, you know, um, you know, Google something when you could go and find an expert on something, exactly. you know, like if, if you're making tables for a living, you can't learn how to make a table you know just yeah. from google alone you got to meet with someone who's a, a master at that or a master wood maker or you know exactly. the hardware that goes into it like you have to find experts in that field search them out connect with them and learn from them mm -hmm. and that is how you grow <laughs> oh yeah that's good <laughs> i think it's important what should a good business plan have i think a good business plan has a, a mission statement <clears throat> uh, what what's the problem Mm -hmm. How are you going to solve it, right? right. Um, and then once you realize how you're going to solve it, um, what are the steps to get revenue, mm -hmm. and what are all the costs that are involved with to get that revenue? Right. So um, we call it in business school an assumptions page. So okay. you make all of these assumptions, right? Like these are the things I think things are going to cost, right? Oh, yeah. So like, for example, the, the, just the power is going to cost this, or the electricity is going to cost this, the um, Wi-Fi is going to cost this, or the stationery that I do my billing on. All of those things, right, are assumptions. We don't know how much they cost until we get quotes on them, or we, we, we source how much that's going to cost. So an assumptions page backed up by actual quotes and facts right. is an important aspect of the business plan. Um, and then, you know, going from there, just being able to pivot from your business plan. Okay. Because in the beginning, you may have a vision for how you think it's going to be. Um, and then, you know, a year into it, or maybe even a couple of months, you may realize that, wow, I need to go in a completely different direction. <laughs> and you have to be open to that. You can't just say, oh, you know. Right, right. It, they're, they're, you, you can't have be just to be stuck willing. On the, you cannot the be stuck. Way. Yeah. So I think that, that writing the business plan is a beautiful process. But the day you start your business, it's like, okay, that's nice. Let's put this. Let's put this business plan up here on the shelf. Right. And let's write a new one. Okay. A new one, a different type of one that is in the making. You know, and it's how you pivot and how you change. So. Okay. So we got our business plan. Uh, we have our space if, if space <laughs> if is you needed. Choose here, yeah. If you choose here, or it, maybe even out, out of your own house, you know. Yep. So what's next after that? Then growing it. Um, well, it's yeah, like any plant you put, put the feet plant, to the ground. Yeah, you, know? you put a plant in the in the pot. It's like it's got to be watered. You know, mm -hmm. you got to take care of it, um, and you have to put a lot of sweat equity into yourself mm -hmm. and your business. So. You know, a lot of people will start a company and they'll hire a bunch of employees. But the reality is, is like you have to bootstrap that company right. for a couple of years. Um, and in fact, most businesses don't get out of the red until year three. So, you know, it, it takes bootstrapping. It takes a lot of hard work in the Sacrifice. front end and sacrifices. Um, and of course, I'll always outsource when you can, but if you can do it yourself, do it yourself and save the money and keep your overhead low. <laughs> Burn Ooh. rate low, overhead low. Overhead low, y'all uh, hear that? <laughs> yeah. I, I see a lot of people who starting up and they're just spending money just because they have it, you know? But the revenue still has to come in. I, funny enough, I actually talked to someone who started a company. Um, they spent $5,000 on their domain name. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> so five thousand dollars on their on their domain name alone. And you know, they were really happy about that. It was yeah. like 
uh, I, I think they were, I think they're more so happy about the spending of that <laughs> amount of money than anything else. And a domain name typically costs somewhere around ten ten dollars, you know. Yeah. Um. So that was just crazy to me that they would that they would do that. Again, I think having good mentors and uh, yeah. good people to bounce ideas off of could probably like stop a mistake like that from happening. Yeah. Um, and again, I think people are always especially when I think they have a great idea, they don't mm. want to share it because they're afraid somebody's going to steal it. Right. But it's like, no, the, the ideas are all over. You know, it's who can, who can actually take that idea and implement the things that need to happen. I mean, that's, you got to have passion. No one's going to yeah. steal your idea. It is, is it? better to connect with people and share your idea and get feedback and prohibit you know, decisions like that from happening exactly. um, through conversation, you know. Um, and so, again, I don't know this person, but it seems like they, they should have talked with more people, which I think yeah. solidifies the fact of what I'm saying. <laughs> I would never. <laughs> yeah, I know. And, I, you know. Uh, maybe if you're in that kind of business, though. But, yeah. Uh, they must have a lot of capital. Yeah. <laughs> so how do, how do we, I guess, get capital to start? To so, yeah, raising money for a business, um, I'll, I'll say two things. One, it's not impossible. Uh, people can do it. Um, and two, just because someone's willing to give you money doesn't mean they're the right fit to give you money. Mm. Um, what do you mean by that? Well, you can have someone who's willing to invest in you, but what other value do they, do they bring to your project? Mm -hmm. um, choosing somebody who not only brings financial help, but mentoring, or someone who really gets your vision about where you're trying to go, mm. um, I think that is even more important than the money itself. Um, choosing the right investors, is, I think, is key um, and, and crucial to someone's success. Um, and sometimes the value that someone gives you in terms of their time and guidance can be more important than the money itself. Oh yeah, that's good. Cause that, because that, that can definitely stop you from making mistakes and things like that. For sure. <laughs> so, okay, so we have our space, our business plan, we have capital now. And so, one thing um, I guess would be something to think about is what, how do we expand a business? Grow. The, yeah, how do we grow? How do we get more customers, more clients, things like that? Wow. You grow intentionally. <laughs> you can grow too fast. Okay. You, you know, you can think that you're ready for a second location or third location. Um, and again, and this is where, you know, good investors and good guidance comes into effect. Um, grow with intention. You know, what is the, the five-year plan? What is the 10-year plan? What is the 20-year plan? Um, again, it's like, okay, great. We wrote this business plan. We put it up on the shelf. Right. Then we started to write a new one, a work in progress one, mm -hmm. right? Then, that's great, you're working through all those things, you're documenting the, the decisions that you're making and why you're making them. Now let's write a future plan, you know? Right. What, where do we want to go in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, you know? Exactly. Um, so I think growth can always happen organically, um, but it tends to work better when it's planned and intentional. Um, so, yeah, getting that pen back out, talking <laughs> to more people, you know, yeah, writing, exactly. writing your intentions down and creating a plan that will make you and your company and the people that work for you have a long and lasting um, business that will, you know, serve its community for a long time. That's really awesome. So those are the basics of, I guess, how to start a business. Like just a, just a general basics. Now world basics, domination. You know? <laughs> Everyone go. <laughs> and so not only do you, you have uh, such a, a hand in helping people start their businesses, uh, like we said before, you're also in property management. Mm -hmm. um, is there any advice you can give for people who may want to get into buying real estate or anything like that? Yeah. Um, just because something is a beautiful building doesn't mean the price is right. So if, you're, if you are getting into commercial um, investments, um, you know, um, even if a, a building seems attractive for your portfolio, um, don't get too caught up in right. it until, you know, sometimes the lesser looking property um, 
ha has is gonna you're gonna get it at a better deal, and right. then you develop it and build it out and make it have value. You know, um, that's good. So I think um, I, I I would say in property when you're buying property, especially um, location is super important. Mm -hmm. um, HVAC. The you know the way the building is is piped and right. uh, the foundation of it. Um, you know, Opelika has a lot of old old buildings, so there is a lot of cost in developing them to get them to code. Or um, you know, I learned all about occupancy and mm -hmm. you know what you're putting into a building um, and what type of business that you want to sell it to. Whether it you know has a sprinkler system. You know, there's different codes for each company uh, or a type of industry so I if, if our building doesn't have um, a sprinkler right. we're gonna we're gonna find um, industries that would fit that that are not you know sprinkler required okay. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, this is just a few things I've learned in this role um, and it is a new role for me uh, and I'm mm. still learning and again I'm searching out people um, that I can talk to that can help me in my journey and how I can help develop Opelika in a really sustainable um, and morally ethical way. So. Okay, cool, cool.